Hey everyone! In this video, we will discuss about the continuity of a function at a number. Continuity of a function describes the graph whether it contains broken part at a given number or interval. When it is unbroken at a number or interval, then the function is said to be continuous. This means that it has no holes, no jumps, or no gaps. In figure A, graph illustrates a function which is not continuous at zero. There is a jump in the graph at zero that disconnects the graphs at the left side and the right side of zero. On the other hand, the graph in figure B describes a function which is not defined at one and hence not continuous there. This function is said to have a hole at the point 1, 0. With these examples, how can we say that a function is continuous at a number c where the graph will not have a hole, a jump, or a gap? A function y equals f of x is said to be continuous at c or has continuity at c if the following conditions are satisfied. First, f of c exists. Second, the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. Third, the limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to f of c. If one or more of the conditions are not satisfied, then f is not continuous at c or f is said to have discontinuity at c. Let us take some examples in determining if a function is continuous at a number. For the first example, determine if the function is continuous at the given number c. f of x is equal to 2x squared minus 5x plus 1 at c equals 1 half. To determine if the given function is continuous at c, then the three conditions should be satisfied. For the first condition, f of c exists. In here, we need to solve for the value of f of c by substituting 1 half to the variable x at the given function. Hence, we will have f of 1 half is equal to 2 times 1 half quantity squared minus 5 times 1 half plus 1. Simplifying it, we will have 1 half minus 5 halves plus 1 which is equal to negative 1. Since f of 1 half is equal to negative 1, then it means that c defined a value and f of c exists. For the second condition, the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. Since our given is a polynomial function, to find its limit, we simply need to direct substitute the value of c to our polynomial function. Hence, the limit of f of x as x approaches 1 half is equal to 2 times 1 half squared minus 5 times 1 half plus 1. So that will be equal to 1 half minus 5 halves plus 1, which is equal to negative 1. Since the limit of f of x is negative 1, then it means that the limit of the function exists. For the third condition, the limit of f of x as x approaches c should be equal to f of c. From conditions 1 and 2, we have seen that f of c is equal to negative 1 and the limit of f of x as x approaches c is also equal to negative 1. And with this, notice that f of c is equal to the limit of f of x. Hence, condition 3 is also being satisfied. With the three conditions being satisfied, we can now conclude that f is continuous at c. Remember that any polynomial function is continuous at all real numbers. Also, recall that for polynomial functions, the limit at every real number c is evaluated using direct substitution. And thus, it is always continuous at all real numbers. Now, let us consider a function that is not a polynomial function. Determine if the function is continuous at the given number c if the function is 1 over x plus 1 at c equals negative 1. 
To determine if the given function is continuous at C, then the three conditions should be satisfied. First, f of C exists. In solving for f of C, we will be substituting negative 1 to the variable x of the given function. Hence, f of negative 1 is equal to 1 over negative 1 plus 1. Simplifying it, we will have 1 over 0, which will give us undefined. When negative 1 is substituted to the function, it gives us an undefined value. With this, condition 1 is not satisfied. For the second condition, the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. The limit of f of x as x approaches negative 1 is equal to the limit of 1 over x plus 1 as x approaches negative 1. By substitution, we will have 1 over negative 1 plus 1. Simplifying it, we will have 1 over 0 and with that, we can say that the limit of the function does not exist. Since the limit of the function does not exist, then condition number 2 is not satisfied as well. Since the two conditions are not being satisfied, then f is not continuous at c. Observing the graph of the given function, remember that a rational function is asymptotic at the number x that makes the denominator 0 and thus, any rational function is continuous at any real number that makes the denominator non-zero. This discontinuity is an example of infinite discontinuity represented by a gap. And this is a type of non-removable discontinuity. This happens when f of c does not exist and the limit of f of x as x approaches c does not exist. Moreover, the gap or the line of the discontinuity represents vertical asymptote. Another example, determine if the function is continuous at the given number c. f of x is equal to 1 minus x if x is less than negative 1 and x squared minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to negative 1 at c equals negative 1. To determine if the given function is continuous at C, then the three conditions should be satisfied. For the first condition, f of C exists. Since C is equal to negative 1, then we will consider the second function, x squared minus 1. So f of negative 1 is equal to negative 1 quantity squared minus 1, which is equal to 0. Since there is a value being defined at C, then it follows that f of C exists and condition 1 is being satisfied. For the second condition, the limit of f of x as x approaches C exists. Notice from the graph of the function that as x approaches negative 1 from the left, the function approaches 2. On the other hand, as x approaches negative 1 from the right, the function approaches 0. Since the limit of the function as x approaches from the both sides are not equal, then its limit does not exist. And with this, condition number 2 is not satisfied. There is no need to check for condition number 3 since condition number 2 is already not satisfied. Hence, f is not continuous at c. We can see from the graph of the function that there is a jump at x equals negative 1. Hence, this discontinuity is an example of jump or essential discontinuity which is another type of non-removable discontinuity. This happens when the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left exists and the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the right also exists. But the limit of f of x as x approaches c from the left and from the right are not equal. For our last example, determine if the function is continuous at the given number c if the function is equal to x squared minus x minus 12 over x minus 4 at c is equal to 4. Let us check if each condition is being satisfied. 
for the f of c exist, let us substitute 4 to the variable x of the given function. f of 4 will be equal to 4 squared minus 4 minus 12 over 4 minus 4. Simplifying our value, we will have 16 minus 4 minus 12 over 4 minus 4, which will result to 0 over 0, which is indeterminate. Since we have an indeterminate, condition 1 is not being satisfied. Although condition 1 is not being satisfied, and we can already claim that the function is continuous at C, we want to check condition 2 to determine what type of discontinuity do we have. Even though f at 4 does not exist, the limit of the function at 4 still exists and can be evaluated as follows. The limit of f of x as x approaches c is equal to the limit of x squared minus x minus 12 over x minus 4 as x approaches 4. We can factor the numerator to be x minus 4 quantity x plus 3 and cancel the common factor x minus 4. So we will have limit of x plus 3 as x approaches 4. From here, we can do direct substitution by substituting 4 at the variable x. So that will be equal to 4 plus 3 which is equal to 7. Since there exists a limit of the function, this indicates that this continuity can be removed by redefining the function at 4. This is an example of whole or removable discontinuity. And this happens when f of c does not exist, but the limit of f of x as x approaches c exists. Since we have discussed the continuity of a function at a number c, on our next video, we will discuss the continuity of a function on an interval. Thank you so much for listening and I hope that you have understood the lesson. See you on our next video.